A topic related to shading Blackmagic cameras is how to move tele signals over SDI to the cameras. We have a few other videos that covers this because we have a single product called the SDI GPI link that does this exclusively. So uh, it's really been covered how we can insert tele data and even how we can extract it again and, and have it show up on relay outputs uh, and so forth. And um, sometimes you may already have tele data embedded uh, through the uh, infrastructure, the topology you already chose for your Blackmagic cameras. But in particular, if you have other production switcher systems than uh, Blackmagic's own ATEM system, then you might have this challenge. We heard or uh, uh, know from the manual of uh, TriCaster systems that they seem also to integrate tally on the uh, SDI ancillary data going out to, to the camera chain. So um, with that system, you may already have it. it. You can look in the manual if that's the case. But in this case, this, the section in the document, um, in the, our white paper on strategies for managing Blackmagic camera chains, we have assumed that all you have access to would be a GPI interface. So the SDI GPI link would be the product to uh, turn to in this case where what you can see is, is the GPI interface of your production switcher system would be hooked up to the SDI GPI link and uh, be able to insert tele data going to your distribution amplifier of whatever sort it is and then out to your cameras. Of course, you can al also combine this with a shading controller from us like the CCU, but uh, if you take the ATEM CCU, you can buy it with an option for um, GPI, so you can actually insert up to eight channels of uh, red tally um, already in, in that product, so um, you may not need the SDI. Uh, GPI link. In any case, you will be able to, to uh, probably understand it uh, better if you read the document, or you can always ask us in which kind of combination you need to um, get things to, to make this happen. As you can see from this drawing, you can even do it with vMix, and vMix doesn't have any GPI, but you can uh, connect with Ethernet to vMix and get information out from there about your, your different uh, cameras and whether they are uh, on tally or not and um, use the SDI GPI link to insert it. Another secondary topic related to um, shading Blackmagic cameras is how when you have set up your shading station for your shading operators, how do you provide them a great way of monitoring their work? And um, RCPs like the one you can get from us, they have a joystick um, that has a small button on top. So you, when you press that button, it will um, or you can map that button or the preview button on the product to bring up a source on a monitor in front of you. That's at least the idea. And, but there are different ways you can go about it. And that's what we will take a look at now. So um, in the white paper, we have outlined uh, like three different ways you can, you can do this. And um, we'll first look at one where we assume we have a single Ethernet connection that will help us to uh, to, to, to do this. So let's first take a look at, at the drawing and see what is kind of inside it. So you can see that on the right side, we have suggested three different products you could use. That could be a, a video router of any sort, where one output would be connected to a monitor in front of the shading operator. Another one would be a Blackmagic multi-viewer. And that's an interesting product because uh, maybe it's meant for multi-viewing, but it has a solo mode. So when you enable the solo mode, it would take just one of the sources and bring up on uh, the output itself. And um, uh, so that's that's interesting too. And then finally, we have the ATEM switcher where you could use an auxiliary output, more or less like a video router, to uh, bring up a particular camera on the monitor for the CCU operator. All these devices would be um, characterized by, um, th there would be a single ethernet connection to this device to manage the, um, uh, the routing for the monitor. So on the, the left side of the drawing, you see various Skyway products. So let's start from the bottom where you see the CCU, CCU Lite, which is a multi-camera controller. So here it's really easy because the, the controller itself would be connected to an ATEM switcher or use the SDI out to shade the cameras. And then it would also have a device core installed uh, associated with the camera selector buttons so when you press these buttons to select which camera you're shading, you're at the same time routing a source to the monitor in front of you. 
and thereby we have only a single device that connects with a single connection to video routers, multi-viewer, and ATEM switcher. In particular, the ATEM switcher has, uh, it's important that you only use a single client connection to that one to make this happen. Otherwise you will get in trouble with the, uh, because it has a limit on the number of connected clients it can, uh, it can accept. Now, uh, there's also the option that you, uh, if you use an RCP for multi-camera control, which is kind of uh, unusual, but it's still possible. In particular, if you get the RCP with an encoder wheel, and uh, in that case, you have the same situation, single controller communicating with a single router. Now, if you have multiple RCPs, you have a different case because here you need every RCP's button to trigger something in relation to your monitor. And that's actually how it usually works in an OB van. So you'll find that you have this DB9 connector that goes on the um, Sony RCP, for instance, and that's hooked up to some kind of GPI box that will do the magic of bringing the source up on the monitor in front of you. And of course, you can do that with Skyhoy hardware exclusively. So we have the Ethernet GPI link box, which is our multi-purpose GPI product that will accept GPI triggers from uh, multiple RCPs, uh, so uh, two wires for each going into the Ethernet GPI link box that will then, on a single Ethernet connection, connect to your video router. And what it also has is a really clever way of, of managing the uh, inputs because we find that some people, they, they want, when you press the button, then it brings up the source and, and it stays there until you press the next button and that's the source that you see on the monitor. But you can also do it this way. When you press the button and you release it again, then uh, the source comes up when you hold it down and then the source goes back to program when you release. And you might even want that if you if you press this button down and then this one on the other one and then release this one first, then the, the second one stays on the monitor and when you release that one, it goes back to not the, the first one's source, but again, back to program. And that kind of queuing system is built into the Ethernet GPI link with a function we call hold groups. And that needs to know about every device that requests a source to be shown on the screen. So um, this is why it's, it's really great to have a single device doing this communication. And uh, that's what we are proposing here. I think all, all this information is also embedded in the text if you read the white paper. So you'll see somewhere in all this text that it's described. And if we look at how you could do this with multiple Ethernet connections, this is the case where you, you miss out on the whole groups functionality, for instance, because now each RCP would have a connection to the video router, but you could do that. So each RCP would connect to the video router over Ethernet and it would then be associated with routing a particular input to a particular output. You could also set up that it falls back to a particular default input like program if you want so that they would still perform correctly. But um, it again may depend on your video router because um, so far we, we don't see any problems with the uh, um, video routers from Blackmagic Design or the multi-viewer from Blackmagic Design in terms of how many clients you could have connected or if it was an AJ Kumo router, that's the same. You can connect like many, many, many clients, but not with the ATEM switcher. So if you wanted to set that up to um, to use the auxiliary output on an ATEM switcher, you're in trouble unless you use the ATEM proxy, of course, which you could, but still um, probably the Ethernet GPI link box is a better choice. There's also the third option, which is to monitor with GPI. So monitoring with GPI, um, again, the, if, if you look at the drawing here, we still have routers, multi-viewers, switches on the, the far right side, but we also included a product like the uh, Demon 12, what is it? CS, ah, Demon 12S from Decimator that has GPI inputs and uh, will take all your, um, well, basically it is a multi-viewer. So it, it has a lot of SDI inputs that will create a grid for your multi-viewer. And then you can use the GPI triggers to bring some of these sources up in solo mode. And you can of course connect the GPI outputs of RCPs or uh, of a CCU from Skyway directly to the Demon 12S. Of course, you can still use the Ethernet GPI link, but the suggestion you see in the top of the drawing here is essentially uh, the same suggestion you saw in the, in the first drawing.